Greetings fellow custom loop enthusiasts, I'm Matiz and in this episode of the EK How To series we will tackle the unavoidable loop draining process. Fear not, for we won't leave you swimming in the confusion or coolant for that matter, instead we'll drop some valuable tips and clever tricks on properly draining your loop and doing it with ease. From optimal drain port placement to mastering the art of the tilt, we've got a reservoir of knowledge waiting to be tapped. Easy versus complex loop. First, let's establish what we consider a straightforward or complex loop in terms of draining. This might come as a surprise, but easy loop building does not equal easy loop draining. It's the position of the drain valve and the PC components that makes a loop easy to drain or the opposite of easy. But no matter how complex one loop gets, if you can fill it, you can drain it. An easy drain loop could look like this. You have a drain port at the bottom of the loop, while the loop components do not create any ups and downs for the coolant so it can drain without a hitch. In this case, you only need gravity to do the work. So what would be considered a harder to drain type of loop? If you have a vertically placed GPU, it will certainly make the loop more challenging to drain since you would need to tilt the case and help the coolant get out of the vertically placed water block. It has to go down into the block and then up again. It would be even more challenging if the said water block was one with an active backplate. That is because the fluid has to go down into one block and back up into the other, where it makes the same trip downward and upward. With an ABP set like this one, the draining process would be the same even in a regular horizontal position. Another major drainage obstacle is placing the radiator vertically, like on the side of the case. To understand why, we must explain what a radiator coolant flow looks like. Each radiator has at least two ports. One is used as an inlet for the liquid and the other is an outlet. But inside the radiator there are two separate chambers or tanks. The coolant enters through one of the ports and flows through the radiator in a U-shaped path, exiting on the other side. So if we place the radiator on the side panel like this, the coolant needs to travel upward and then downward or vice versa, depending on the port orientation. This means we must tilt the case several times to allow the coolant to reach the bottom. Now let's drain a loop for real to show you how it works. We'll do it on the easy loop first. Usually we have a drain valve and we need a fitting with a piece of soft tubing to safely drain the coolant out of the PC. And don't forget the bottle. Now let's remove the cap from the drain valve and attach the tube to it. I should probably turn off the PC first. For demonstration purposes we're gonna lift this PC because the bottle should be lower than the loop. Now let's open the valve by sliding this part. You can now see the coolant coming out very, very slowly, because no air is going into the loop to replace the coolant. This is why we need to open one port. A safe place to do so would be here, on the reservoir, so no liquid is spilled. Some good tilting action can still help you get the most of the coolant out. And one final tip, if you can open a port at the topmost location of the loop, that will drain the coolant the fastest. And there we go, the loop is drained. 
Now let's move on to our more complex build, which has a distribution plate and a side radiator. The distribution plate has a dedicated drainage port, if we didn't forget to install it. Oh, it's right over there. Let's attach the drain tube to it and open the valve. Okay, now before we open the valve, let's do a couple more things. Now that we've attached the drain tube, we're gonna open the valve. We will also open the top fill port to let the air in. And should we open? Yep. Okay, we're also gonna open this fill port. And As you can see, only about half of the coolant is out because the side radiator is an obstacle. Now, we have a couple of options here. We can put some muscle into it and start tilting the case in all directions to get the most of the coolant out. But if there is still too much coolant left inside the loop, we can take each component out and drain it. Let's first start by tilting the case. Looks like there's still quite a bit of coolant left in this loop. But have no fear, Matiz is here, with more tips and tricks up my sleeve. In this situation, with a distro plate and stubborn coolant, we can attach another tube to the loop to blow some air inside and push the coolant out. First, close all open ports like this fill port over here. And of course the drain valve. Now that that's done, we need to find the port opposite of the drain valve for the best results. Since the distribution plate is one big reservoir stretching from the top to the bottom of the case, the middle of the loop would be somewhere above the GPU and below the CPU. So somewhere in this zone, we will choose the port ideal for blowing the air through, using another tube. The air will push the coolant towards the other end of the reservoir and eventually to the drain valve. Make sure the coolant has been drained enough, emptying the reservoir. This channel, where we want to attach the tube, should also be empty. Now, before we start blowing, make sure the tube is inside the container and the container is preferably empty. Now we open up the drain valve and start blowing. As you can see, it's working perfectly, because we're pushing coolant out from all those hard-to-get places. Okay, so now it's getting harder and harder to get the coolant out, so we're gonna switch the channels. First, let's close off the valve. Okay, so now I tilted the case to empty the channel, so we can attach the tube to it. Because this is a Matrix 7 system and the ports are so close together for the alignment, we're gonna help ourselves with the micro extenders. Now let's open up the drain valve again, make sure the tube isn't inside the coolant and... Remember to take a breather in between. We can also put the case on its side to empty that side radiator. It's gonna make it a lot easier. And this, my friends, is what I call an almost empty loop. The same could be done by removing the upper tube from the GPU block and blowing air into it while closing the other side, and then switching sides and blowing the other way. The only condition is that this tube be empty enough to avoid making a mess and spilling the coolant everywhere. 
This method of blowing air from the furthest place from the drain valve can be applied to any loop, no matter how complex it is. And before we move on to loop planning with maintenance in mind, let me show you another trick that is particularly helpful if no drain valve is installed. Yes, that can also happen due to the specific design of the loop or simply because you forgot to install it. Happens to the best of us. But as I have said, if the loop can be filled, it can also be drained. Now in that case, we'll need a filling bottle, but instead of filling, we will use it for suction. Our EK filling bottle is stiff enough and once squeezed, it returns to its original form. So you squeeze it, put the tube into the coolant and suck the coolant out by releasing the bottle. You can take the tube out of the bottle and flip it for even better results. Now you have a longer tube to reach inside the reservoir and suck the rest of the coolant out. Now that's a neat trick. You know that saying, failing to plan is planning to fail. If you watched the video so far, you probably know where I'm going with this. It's loop planning time. So your future self can thank you for simplifying the maintenance process. First, you install the drain valve. Then ensure it's at the lowest possible position in the loop so you can count on gravity to help with drainage. Next, find a spot in the loop you can open if needed, so you can blow in some air and push the coolant out. That place needs to be opposite of the drain valve. And you can even install another drain valve if the loop is too complex for simple draining. Don't limit yourself to only one drain valve per loop, when the second drain valve could be a game changer. Just remember to check the coolant flow and visualize the most beneficial place for it. Like an example, this is a special project we've been working on and it's extremely well thought out. And it's got two drain valves, one at the distro and one at this radiator. The reason is that when you open this one, all the coolant from this radiator and the bottom radiator will go through this drain valve, while the remainder will go through the one on the distro plate. And bravo! You've now mastered the art of loop draining, so your upcoming maintenance can be a breeze. Until next time, keep your cool, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, so you never miss a drop of our liquid cool wisdom. Stay cool!